Undecided on what accessories you should get for your electric XP e-bike? Well, watch this video. It just may help you decide. So if you guys have been thinking about getting some accessories for your electric XP e-bike, you guys might want to check out this video because I'm going to go over the ones that I purchased for mine and what a world of difference it made on a few things like the seat and the seat post. Now, in the end, we're going to be doing a comparison on this seat that I purchased versus the factory seat that it came with. I'm going to be mounting the GoPro there and aiming it up and showing you guys how much more comfortable this seat is versus the old seat that it came with, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of the other accessories I bought for it as well. So first and foremost, uh, the one thing you guys are definitely going to need is something to mount a drink. And I decided to go with this one here. It just clips around the handlebar and then you can mount any drink you want onto this right here. And that will hold your drink. That way it's really accessible right there. Easy to do. Now, one thing that I'm sure many of you know, if you already have this bike, there's absolutely really nowhere along here that you can mount anything as far as a camera uh, gopro uh, cell phone and without having wider bars or without putting wider aftermarket bars on what you guys are going to need is this accessory right here and this is basically an extension you can see here it's it's about i'd say maybe 10 inches i never measured it but that's just roughly about a 10 inch extension piece here and that allows you to mount a few different accessories on the front of your bike like i got a light here a cell phone holder here my gopro attachment here and another holder for a flashlight right here hey guys and i'll put a link below in the description to any of these items that i'm talking about here today so if you guys are interested please make sure you check that stuff out now they are affiliate links and if you guys use them i will get a slight commission at no extra cost to you but that's what helps this channel out it helps me out a little bit with purchasing things to review for you guys so if you guys are interested check them out below now it was a little bit tricky mounting on there and this is the way that i found that i like mine the best is uh mounted i put the mounts right next to where the display mounts and it was a little tricky because it wants to mount crooked but a little bit of work and finesse you can get it to mount just like this all right, so now this cell phone holder here, basically you just set your phone in there. So it just clips in there, holds it nice and tight, and then you just press these side buttons here. And it opens it back up to take it off. So if you guys are looking for a way to mount your cell phone, I definitely recommend this little holder right here. And it, it, uh, it'll accept a pretty big, decent-sized phone. As you guys can see here, this is just an iPhone 5SE. But, I mean, look how much room you got. You got plenty of room for a bigger phone. The one thing you will have to do if you mount this the way I did, I had to roll my bell down just slightly just so it had enough room to clear this. So <clears throat> there's that. Uh, now, one, another thing you guys probably know if you already have one of these is that the headlight is not very bright on these things, the factory headlight that it comes with. And I know a lot of you wanted to know how many volts the light was. Actually, underneath, mine says 36 to 48 volts DC. So this is not a 12-volt light. So if you guys are upgrading that, make sure you purchase the right voltage light. I know some other people upgraded it and was able to buy connectors to connect into the factory wiring, but I didn't really want to update this because I, I like to be able to leave this on all the time and I didn't want it to drain my battery. So I figured I'd leave that light there and just get some additional lights for up top. And this light here, I purchased a while back. It's a cycle torch and uh, this thing is really bright. I'll try to show you guys uh, how bright that is compared to this light when it gets dark right, guys now it's nighttime i'm showing you this is the factory light aimed down this is straight onto my garage this is the light that the bike comes with now i'm going to show you the cycle torch that i have this is the cycle torch let me turn off the off the bike light and this is the cycle torch it's the shark 500 pointed at the ground and now pointed at the garage so you could see a world of difference this little light makes you can see here that just clips clips right on there with this rubber band so you could take that off and it and, and just put it on there when you guys need it now <clears throat> a lot of you guys that got these bags early on you was able to use a coupon code and get them free now if you've got these bags for free it's a great deal they do work pretty good however i would not spend fifty dollars on the bags from electric I mean, they're a little bit cheap, but like I said, they do work. And if you get them free, great. It's a good deal. 
but if you guys are looking to purchase a set of bags i would probably go with like rock bros i know rock bros makes a nice bag that goes on the back that actually has the paneers built in the sides you unzip them and then they fold down so you can use it as a bag and then fold them out when you need them which i really like but i wanted to go the cheaper route so i just purchased this bag here because i already had the paneers so that gets me to the next thing that you guys are definitely going to need is some sort of bag to go on the rack in the back now this is the one i decided with i see a lot of people on there had these now, the only thing that i did to change this the way it mounts was i added this additional strap here i had my wife make it for me that way i could strap it around the seat so that it definitely wouldn't slide off the back and then it has the velcro straps that you can secure it right to the rack underneath two velcro straps and, and it puts it on there pretty tight now this thing here this thing is just another bag i i, I had um, that's basically a bag that goes under your seat here, but I went ahead and uh, attached it right here down in between the frame here and it's pretty secure there. It sits there nice and I have my tire patch kit in there, which you guys are definitely going to need. Definitely recommend purchasing a patch kit because a lot of people were getting flats on these bikes and <clears throat> I've seen that you guys can cha change or not change, but take the tube out without taking the wheel off the bike, patch the tube and put it back in if you were on a trail. It, it may be possible. I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen in the forums that a few people have done that. So definitely recommend a patch kit. Now I'm going to save the best for last, the seat and the seat post. So now this bag it has a nice uh, bungee on top that you could secure a nice pair of gloves with. And basically inside a few other accessories that you guys might want to get is a spare tube. And I went with a mongoose. It was about 10 or 11 bucks, I think. Um, 20 by 4 you guys are going to want to get a spare tube in case you're out and need to change change the tube if it has too big of a hole i have uh here's my other light that i said it just has you just buy this attachment and you could put it on any flashlight it just slides right onto here basically it just slides right onto there and it gives you a little bit of extra light that way if the battery dies on my cycle torch then i can go ahead and clip a flashlight or two on there as they die just swap them out now this little uh flashlight bracket it's not the heaviest heaviest duty thing but it does get the job done if you need it just for a little bit of extra light and then i also have in here a headlamp for extra light just in case everything else dies a uh, set of set of allen wrenches here that you need just for keeping things tight a little pump that came with my light but now that thing that'll probably take me forever to air my tires up if i had to now another thing that i got that's pretty cool you'll see here in the side pocket uh, this little thing here is a motorcycle disc brake alarm now what this thing does is you can clamp it on your your brake disc clamp it around it i'll show you guys here it has a little pin that comes through here and it locks it on here when you lock it on pretty much beeps and then it's an alarm so if somebody moves your bike now it's not going to prevent somebody from picking the bike up and carrying it away but once they move it it will warn them and then if they move it again it will go off and it is very loud it is very loud and ear piercing so that's a nice deterrent to maybe keep somebody from stealing your bike now they can't ride the bike with this thing on because it'll come around and hit the fork or hit the something in the back if you had it mounted on the back i may actually get a second one one for front and back uh, maybe that's a little overkill, but um, this thing for the price, definitely worth it for a nice little alarm. Let me grab the key here first and then I'll show you guys show you guys how that thing works. So if somebody was to bump your bike, you can see there it warned me. And then if I go to move it again, sometimes it takes a little bit of movement. Sorry guys, it's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but there you go there. So basically it's just a little alarm and plus it's a, a, you know, will prevent somebody from just hopping on your bike and riding it if you were just running in somewhere real quick. Another thing I purchased that I, I didn't install yet was this blue reflective tape. I've seen some other people had this on their bikes, but eventually once I'm done with most of my YouTube videos, even though I'm not sponsored or anything by electric, I just figured I'd, I'd leave the name on there for a while. Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and put this over top of the, uh, the electric logo. That way, when I'm on the bike trail or whatnot, people don't really, uh, you know, might not think it's electric and a and little bit less of a chance that people are going to give me a hard time riding this somewhere where they think you shouldn't. Uh, let's see what else. I got this. Uh, now, one thing you guys may want to change is the, is the rear uh, freewheel. Now, this one that I purchased is a 11 to 28 it comes factory with a 14 to 28 and basically this is going to prevent you from having to pedal like a maniac when you're in high gear trying to go anything over like 20 mile an hour so this thing is definitely going to be worth it i just haven't had a chance to get it on but i will be putting on here uh, eventually and putting a video on there for that as well so if you guys are interested make sure you subscribe I know I've been promising uh, putting that on for a while now, but I've been super busy, but eventually I am going to get that put on and hopefully it helps you guys out if you guys are thinking about doing the same. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my favorite part now and the best investment I think that you guys should definitely upgrade and that is the seat and the seat post. Now, Electric does sell a suspension seat post and I believe right now it's uh, basically free when you purchase the bike which it's not a bad deal i think it's like 930 dollars and you get the seat post that's not too bad being that i paid 900 for my bike without the seat post and then the seat post i bought was about 30 bucks so uh, basically the seat post that i purchased here was a zoom and it's a suspension seat post you can see here uh, i'm going to show you guys a little bit more detail about it but you can adjust this thing with a nut on the bottom for your tension and then the cloud nine comfort select seat this is the one that has the hole in the center for airflow to keep your keep you cool but it has like an infused gel foam and it's very soft compared to the factory seat and i'm going to go ahead and show you guys the difference between them so it's also a little bit bigger you can see here that the factory seat is a little bit smaller than the cloud nine seat and it has the rubber bumpers on the factory seat and on the cloud nine it has uh, some springs down here for suspension as well now these don't work the greatest now i've seen a video before where someone said that you can adjust these by twisting this i'm not quite sure i tried i couldn't get it to spin uh, these nuts on the bottom are not for adjustment um, if anybody any of you know how to adjust these seats please comment below and let us know if you have if ever had any good luck adjusting these but with this setup here i don't really need to adjust mine it is definitely a lot more comfortable just the way it is yeah guys one thing i almost forgot to show you was you're going to need this uh toolkit here uh this one's made by bell you can get any toolkit but this one has some allen wrench and the main tool that you guys are definitely going to need because i've already needed it i've seen some other videos that people have already had the same problem is your spokes are going to probably get loose in your real rear wheel and start making noise so you're going to want to at least get a spoke tool the size that you guys are going to need is a 4.0 now this one has all different kinds but uh, you're definitely at some point going to need to tighten up your spokes because they will start making some noise I just watched a good video the other uh, yesterday, in fact, on a guy that took his to a bike shop and had it on video of them adjusting the spokes. And I'll try to put a link to that down below. It was a very good video and definitely uh, shows a pretty easy way that you can go ahead and adjust those spokes. As far as the seat goes, I'll show you guys here. Here, get this real good here, bud. So you can see how cushiony this is compared to this one here this one it's real bouncy this one comes up nice and slow because it's more of like a memory foam slash gel in there and i'm gonna go ahead and sit on it and show you guys and you can see when you sit on it it does go down a little bit but it has a pretty good suspension on it now they do make a more expensive seat post that you can get for about 60 or 70 dollars on aliexpress and like 120 or 100 and some on amazon and it's supposed to be better than the zoom it's an i think it's an ncx or something like that yeah if i'm wrong guys please uh comment below with, with which one it is now this one is definitely i'm glad i purchased this one i mean this is all i need it's definitely working out good for me now i'm going to show you guys here this seat post compared to the other one this is a 31.6 millimeter seat post and the factory one is a 31.8 i believe 500 
millimeters long and the one that I purchased is a 350 millimeters so a little bit less height adjustment there but I really don't think that anyone is going to need the max extension on this the one that electric sells is just as long as the factory one so it probably it might be better you might be better off getting that one if you're tall but for me I'm about 5'8 and this is definitely uh, good enough for me in fact I don't even have it adjusted all the way up and I'm still sitting up pretty high you can see here this is the minimum just minimum insertion height right here and I'll go ahead and get a tape measure and measure this for you guys so you guys know the specs on that all right guys now at the minimum insertion the top of the seat is roughly 40 inches off the ground now when you sit on it it is going to go down a few inches depending on how heavy you are so it might go down to about 38 but just in the bike minimum insertion insertion with the seat zoom seat post and the cloud nine seat is around 40 inches now the minimum that you guys can go is down to here if you're short and riding this bike the minimum is about 34 inches but keep in mind once you get on there the seat is going to go down a few inches depending on how much you weigh so i would say 32 to 34 inches but 34 is the minimum so you got about six inches of adjustment there 34 inches to 40 inches from the ground up and then we'll see i'll put the factory one back in and we'll see what the max it can go up to 45 inches but i don't know anybody that would be riding the bike like that i mean the handlebars are up as high as they can go it has a minimum insertion uh label on the handlebars and the handlebars are up as high as they can go and that just that looks way too funny one thing guys when you get this if you guys get this cloud nine seat in the zoom seat post being that this is like 0.2 a uh, millimeter smaller than the factory one you guys are gonna have to hand tighten this little knob here just slightly and then the factory clamp will clamp this seat post in even though it's just slightly just a little bit smaller and then you can see here on the bottom that there's an adjustment screw there I have mine set to the uh, least pressure because I'm not I'm only about 165 pounds or so so I have that set to the minimum uh, adjustment and that's gonna give me the most cushion on my ride Let's go ahead and get this inserted here. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the GoPro on the back and show you guys how much of a difference this thing makes. All right guys, so I have the factory seat mounted on. Let's go check this out and see how good it does. All right guys, now we're gonna put the factory or the aftermarket one in and we're gonna try that out. Aftermarket cloud nine.
All right, guys, now you can see there how I was barely even bouncing because the seat was taking up most of the bounce and then the seat post would get the rest of it, whatever it couldn't handle. But you can see on the factory seat, you can hear every time I bounced on the seat that the seat was going like, <laughs> well, this one, it doesn't even really do that. I mean, it just absorbs everything. The cushion is just way smaller. So I'm kind of curious to see how this video turned out, if these springs are actually working or not. But uh, one more thing. I wanted to mention guys let me go ahead and get this seat out of here and show you now the seat post that i bought the zoom one that, that i purchased there's a few different kinds the one i have it has the two bolts that mount here that mount the seat post to the to the saddle to the rails they do have some models with one but i figured the one with two would be a little better plus this one is still adjustable that you can adjust your seat forward and backwards like this that's why i went with this seat post all right guys thanks for watching if you guys found this video helpful please give a thumbs up and please leave a comment below it would really help my channel out if you want to see more videos like this please check out my playlist and some of my other videos and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you guys don't miss any of my future videos Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys around on my next video.